everyone was excited when Miss Blythe announced that Millie and Molly's class was going on a field trip to the forest. And you'll collect specimens and draw pictures of birds and plants. Wow! I get to be an explorer! I can find some ways to my collection! Get these permission notes signed and on Monday we'll all catch the ferry across the river. <laughs> it was then that Molly's enthusiasm for the field trip suddenly, mysteriously disappeared. Miss Blythe, do we all have to go on the field trip? Yes, of course. It's part of your schoolwork. Oh, um, it's just, um, I might have to do something else on Monday. And what's that? Um, just something really important. Maybe. But the next day, when it was time to hand in the permission note, Molly still hadn't found an excuse not to go on the field trip. Warm clothes and comfortable shoes. Molly! Molly! Your permission note! I can't give it to you. Why not? It's... it's... the fairy. What about the fairy? It's too... too... what? Too, um... scary. <laughs> Molly's scared of the fairy. <laughs> Chloe, perhaps you'd like to stand up and share your funny joke with the whole class. But no, Miss Blythe. Right you. <gasps> so we'll see you all bright and early Monday. Poor Molly. But lucky Molly had a very clever friend, Millie. <gasps> it's all right, Molly. It's safe. You've been on the ferry before, but only when it was tied up. Now, lass, I promise I'll take my ferry only out a little ways, not right out into the river, until you're used to it. But I'll be right beside you all the way, Molly. Ooh. All right. So over the next couple of days, Millie sat beside Molly on the ferry. The first day, the ferryman took the ferry just a short way out into the river. The second day, the ferryman took the ferry just a little further out into the river. Here, lass, you pay attention to Boson and don't go fretting about what the ferry's doing. Yeah, give Boson a good pat. The third day was the day of the field trip. Molly hoped that she would be able to cross the river from one side to the other without being too frightened. Binoculars and a magnifying glass and a compass. It's only a day trip. Why do you need all that stuff? All aboard! Molly, are you ready for your big voyage, matey? Uh, um... Come on, Molly. Molly, take a look at how the water sparkles. No, thank you very much. Both of these cutting. Go on, Molly. You can do it. The river is so beautiful. Go on, Molly. Yeah, you can do it. Ready. See, lass? We're over halfway across the river. <laughs> Good on you, lass. You're no longer a landlubber. You did it. And you were right beside me all the way, Millie. <laughs> With the ferry trip behind them, the whole class was soon exploring the forest. Yes, you know, they're a fungus. It's so pretty. And so is this leaf. Here, use my magnifying glass. I'm going to put it in my collection. Suddenly, the unexpected oh. happened. Oh. What was that? Oh. oh dear! It's alien zombie monster spaceships! It's just a bit of thunder. Oh, and some rain too. Oh dear me. Quick six people, gather round. We'll have to take shelter somewhere. But there's nowhere out here in these woods with a roof. Miss Blythe, 
Mama Hickety Spawn is sneaky. See? Oh, yes, just beyond the trees. Thank you, Millie. Soon everyone was safe, sheltering in Farmer Hegarty's barn, because they couldn't all fit in his house. We'll just stay here a wee while till the rain eases, and we can all go home. Sorry, Miss Floyd, but no one's going anywhere in a hurry. Oh, no. <gasps> Why ever not? The rain's so heavy, the river's flowing too fast for the ferry to cross. Wow! This is exactly what happens to real explorers. Listen, the rain's stopping. Oh, oh my God. God. I the rain. So my mum and dad can just drive over the bridge and get me. No, the bridge upstream has collapsed from the floodwaters. We'll all have to stay the night right here. Come on now, everyone. A little bit of shush. Millie? Molly and I stayed the night in the barn before. It's great fun, really. I'm sure it will be quite an adventure. I've got to go and secure the ferry. Farmer Hegarty's given me this rope. And as for Bolson, Molly, keep an eye on me first, mate. He's staying the night in the barn. Right to you. Thank you, officer. Now, people. I've just spoken to the policeman and he's telling all your families that we're staying the night. What do we sleep on? What do we eat? Oh, you'll be as snug as bugs in these rugs. Farmer Hegarty, thank you. That's grand. And I'm going to set up a barbecue and cook sausages. Got any dinosaur blood? Oh, dinosaur blood? Tomato sauce. I like lots and lots of it. <laughs> It gets pretty chilly in here. Because I'm not staying the night. Storms made it very dark out. Chloe, where are you going? Chloe! I'm going home! Chloe, come back! Oh, dear. I don't know my way around here well enough to go after her. I could go after her. Oh, thank you, but no. Chloe's upset about something. It'd be better if it were me. Molly and I could come with you, Miss Blythe. We know our way around the farm, and I've got my compass. The river was wild and angry when Chloe reached its banks, and nothing like the gently flowing waters they'd crossed earlier that day. Get back from the bank, lass! It's dangerous! The river's washing the bank away! No! It's got to take you across the river! Now! The ferry isn't going anywhere! Go back! No! I'm staying right here! Till you promise to take me home! Don't sit there, lass! It's not safe! Chloe. Stop! Don't come any closer! What's wrong? The river banks could collapse from all the rain! <gasps> oh, Chloe! It'll be night soon! Come back with us. No, I'm going home. Come on, Chloe. It's lovely and warm back in the barn. But Molly saw that something was frightening Chloe, just like the fairy had frightened her. Chloe, is this something that you're worried about? Something back at the barn? No. When I told Millie really about being scared of the fairy, it helped me be brave. It's going to pour. And any more rain on these banks and they'll collapse. Chloe, you don't have to be scared all by yourself. Tell me what's scaring you and it won't seem nearly so scary. Molly's right. A problem shared is a problem halved. Really? Really? Come on, last your friend's right. Pet cat. She's my toy cat. And you think it's furry. I think I know 
what might help? You're right, Molly. Those are ears nice to pat. Almost as nice as my pink kitty cat. You know, Chloe, it's okay to be scared sometimes. When Millie and I first camped out for the night... Is that Chloe? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The next day, the river had subsided. Molly enjoyed her trip back on the ferry even more than the trip over. Nothing was too scary when you had a friend by your side and a cat on your lap. Billy and Molly had helped Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid become friends again after not speaking to each other for years. But Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid were still having to work at their friendship. Is this it, Biddy Bid? My gift to you, Aunt Maud. It's a cutting from Biddy Bid's very own plum tree. Thank you very much, Biddy Bid. My pleasure. Now we'd better get it into the ground straight away. Yes, I know. Don't put it into the ground too deep. I haven't. And make sure you don't overfill the hole. I won't. And whatever you do, don't overwater it. I do know how to garden, Biddy Bid. I am the best gardener in the whole town. Biddy Bid was going to argue that she was just as good a gardener. <coughs> but, wanting to be friendly, she said something else instead. Are you going to enter the giant pumpkin contest this year, Aunt Maud? Giant pumpkins! That's Big Bertha. I won my first giant pumpkin contest with that one about 20 years ago. Wow! I won the following year with this one, Tiny Tim. <laughs> that's not tiny, that's humongous! <laughs> but of course, the following year was my all-time record. Oh, I mustn't have put the photo back after the big newspaper mm. borrowed it. Let's see if I can find it. Look at this one! Have you ever been in a giant pumpkin contest, Biddy Bit? Nope. But you'd be good at growing them. You're almost as good a gardener as Aunt Maud. <coughs> Here it is, Goliath, the all-time record holder. Wow! Mm. I've got an idea. Hmm? What about you don't grow a giant pumpkin this year? What? And let someone else take my trophy? I was thinking you've won enough times. Perhaps someone else should get a go. Like Millie and Molly. Us? Them? What do they know about growing pumpkins? I could teach them. Oh, but I'm the best pumpkin grower in the whole town. How many prizes have you won? Just because I haven't entered any contest doesn't mean I couldn't grow a bigger pumpkin than you, Aunt Maud. I see. Well then, I'll teach Millie and you... I can teach Molly. We'll see who can grow the biggest pumpkin. And so it was decided, Millie and Molly were going to grow giant pumpkins for the giant pumpkin competition. But not exactly in the way Millie and Molly would have liked. Are you sure Molly and I can't grow a pumpkin together? Ah, fiddlesticks! A bit of competition will challenge you both to do better, and then you'll grow a much bigger pumpkin than Biddy... Um, I mean Molly. Come on, my little peach. A bit of competition won't ruin your friendship with Millie. Well... Only if it's fun. Oh, it will be. Now, here's my pumpkin seeds. Hold out your hand. These will grow into the best pumpkins you'll ever see, so plant them out. Now, we're going to treat these seeds with gentle love and tender care so they'll grow strong. And then we can completely smash the opposition. That will be fun. And so Aunt Maud says that keeping the seeds warm with hot water bottles really helps them germinate. Millie, you're not talking to the opposition, are you? Molly's our opponent. But Molly's my friend. Fiddlesticks, and... I don't want you talking to her about our pumpkin growing tricks. It would be better if you didn't talk to her at all. Mm. I see. And did you tell Millie about my special seaweed fertiliser? Well... I might have said something, 
Let's make it the very last piece of information you share with Millie. You don't want them using that information against us, my little cherry. Now, how exactly did Millie use these hot water bottles? But it wasn't like Millie and Molly to keep things from each other. They were friends, after all. And now, they could only spend time with each other at school. This giant pumpkin growing competition isn't as much fun as I thought it'd be. No fun at all. But soon, things went from bad to worse. Aunt Maud's desire to have Millie win at all costs was causing her to do some less than polite things. And this is every last bag of seaweed fertiliser you have? That's it. Oh, Biddy Bid won't be happy. She was going to come in this morning and buy some herself. Won't get another load till next season. Pity. Biddy Bid. Aunt Maud, I heard you use my technique with hot water bottles to help your pumpkin seeds germinate. I might have. And I see you've bought some of the fertiliser I recommended. Yes. Oh dear. I'm afraid I might have bought the last lot. What? But, but, you don't need all that. Don't I? Come on, Millie. We've got a giant winning pumpkin to grow. Bye, Molly. Bye, Millie. Well, fiddle my fiddle! Oh, oh that pumpkin is growing nicely. Let's see how Biddy Bits grows without her fertilizer. Oh. Oh. What's wrong, Aunt Maud? Oh, my oh. back! Oh. I'm afraid you'll be in hospital for a couple of weeks, Aunt Maud. Fiddlesticks! When Biddy Bid heard that Aunt Maud was in hospital, instead of doing the friendly thing and visiting her, she decided to spy on Aunt Maud's pumpkin. Mm, you're doing well. Too well. Let's see how big you are. Sorry to say, Biddy Bid, but you'll be staying here in hospital for a few weeks. Fiddle and fattle. Well, do I have to stay in this bed? Afraid so. All the other beds are taken. <laughs> Molly, would you please tell Biddy Bid that I'm sorry that she's hurt herself, but she shouldn't have been spying in my garden. And Millie, could you please tell Aunt Maud that I wouldn't have gone there if she hadn't deliberately bought all the fertiliser so I couldn't have any? Tell Biddy Bit that I have a reputation to uphold and can't afford to have Millie lose. Tell Aunt Maud that Molly is going to win anyway. No, I'm not going to win. What? Me neither. Why not? We're giving up the competition. No! Why? Well, we're worried that the competition will hurt our friendship, like it's hurt yours. You've even stopped talking to each other again. I see. Oh dear. We'll still come and visit. Maybe tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Aunt Maud, I've been a silly gooseberry. We should have been setting those two girls an example, and instead... Instead, they've set us an example. Well, we'd better do something about it. So the next day, when Millie and Molly came to the hospital to visit, they were in for a surprise. So my good friend Biddy Bit has had the most wonderful idea. I think it was my dear friend Aunt Maud who actually had the good idea. Well, we had the idea that both of us together would help you, the both of you, grow your giant pumpkins. We're very sorry that you got the wrong idea from us. There's nothing wrong with a bit of healthy competition. It's just... just... We were just a pair of silly pineapples. I am no such thing. All right. I'm a silly pineapple, too. <laughs> we just took it all too seriously and spoiled the fun of it. So, what do you think? OK, we'll do it. Good. Ah. As long as it's fun. So for the next few weeks, Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid gave advice to both Millie and Molly. 
Now make sure you build a windbreak to protect your pumpkins. Oh, that's a good idea. It'll stop the wind from drying the pumpkins out. As soon as we've finished this one, I'll help you with yours. Okay. I always get good results when I whistle to my plants. Really? Well, you'll have to try that. Pumpkin next. Thanks. <laughs> Before anyone knew it, the giant pumpkin competition was upon them, and Aunt Maud and Biddy Bid were out of hospital just in time. Here are the finalists. And the finalists are Farmer oh. Hegarty, oh. Molly, oh. and Millie. Oh. The judges have had a difficult time. The three final giant pumpkins are very close in size and weight. But the winner is... Farmer Hegarty! Oh, <laughs> I can't believe I finally beat Aunt Maud! And second prize is awarded jointly to Millie and Molly. Congratulations! Yay! Well done, you clever potatoes! Well done, Farmer Higgity. Perhaps next year we should work together from the beginning. Yes, we'll show Farmer Higgity how really big a pumpkin can be. As long as it's fun, right? Mm. Yes, Millie, as long as it's fun. Congratulations, Farmer Higgity. Yes, it was close thing. Congratulations, Millie and Molly. It was the first really cold day of winter. But Millie's dad knew how to warm things up. A fire! Pass me another pine cone, please, Millie. I'll do it, but I like to. <laughs> One each, then. We wouldn't want an argument now. <laughs> we'll have this ablaze in no time. Why don't you use the big wood? We will, but we have to get the fire started with smaller, lighter wood, like the pine cones. It's called kindling. Pine cones make great kindling. When the fire's going, then we can add the bigger logs. Kindling. Later that day, Millie and Molly took something warm to Millie's neighbour. We'll be back before dinner. Good luck. Shush, Taffy Bogle. Hello, Mr Limpy. We've brought you some nice warm soup. Well, that's very nice of you. Soup for lunch and fish for dinner. I hope... Hope? I'm hoping Tom and Jack are going to catch something. I couldn't pay them, so I gave them the last of my marshmallows in return. But I'm afraid I don't have anything to give you for the soup. Well, if you let us play with Taffy Bogle... That'd be enough. All oh, right. <laughs> Let's get that soup inside first, before it cools down too much. Oh, this soup is warm. Why haven't you got your fire going, Mr Limpy? It's a cold day today. Can't get the fire going. I've run out of smaller pieces of wood to get it started. You mean kindling? That's right. I just learned that. <laughs> Taffy Bogle's none too happy about not having a fire. It'll be very cold tonight. We'll cheer him up and get you some kindling too. Walking! <laughs> <laughs> so the girls took Taffy Bogle out near Farmer Hegarty's farm, where they knew just the place to find some kindling for Mr Limpy. That tree will have a million pine cones under it. Well, we don't want too many. Remember what Mr Limpy said? The bottom could fall out of the box. No, Taffy Bogle! Taffy Bogle! And all the while they made sure that Taffy Bogle stayed firmly on the lead, especially near the river. They knew Taffy Bogle couldn't swim. Not very far away. Jack and Tom were trying to catch dinner for Mr. Limpy. I've got something! I've got something! Finally, their patience was paying off. Here it comes! Oh! A boot? This is hopeless. 
We've been fishing for ages. And now I'm out of bait. How can we catch any fish for Mr. Limpy's dinner without any bait? Why don't we try some of these marshmallows as bait? The fish might like marshmallows. Okay. The box is nearly full. Isn't nature clever, making such a beautiful thing? I think nature made a mistake with this one. <laughs> no, Tuffy Bogle. This isn't a toy. It's to help Mr. Limpy light a fire. <laughs> He really likes that pine cane. Soon the two friends were on their way back to Mr. Limpy with a box full of kindling. You're going to be nice and warm and toasted tonight, Taffy Bogle. <gasps> oh no! The pine cone! Jack and Tom were still having no luck catching Mr. Limpy's dinner. Nothing. Oh, we've used up all the marshmallows. We can't even give them back. <sighs> Whoa! Huh? What are those things coming towards us? Baby otters, I think. A whole herd of them. Nah, you don't get herds of otters. Look, they're... they're... they're pine cones. Pine cones? Hey, I've huh? got an idea. Quick, get, get your fishing net. We'll catch them instead. It took Millie and Molly quite a long time to walk home. Time enough to add frustration to their disappointment. Huh? Taffy Bogle's dry. We didn't have to worry about him catching cold. He dried out on the way home. No way! <laughs> Where are they going in such a hurry? Funny. Looks like they've got baby otters in their buckets. When Millie and Molly arrived back at Mr. Limpy's house, they were in for even more disappointment. Oh, just what I needed. More pine cones for kindling. Huh? Some of these will be dry enough to use tonight. Oh, here you are. Hey, they're our pine cones. No, they're not. They're ours. No, they're mine now. I just bought them. But you can't. They're shaped one was one we picked up for sure. Even Taffy Bogle knows it. That's his favourite one. We fished them out of the river. Well, we put them in the river. Yeah, well... Now hang on, everyone. One at a time. Jack? But, Dad... Jack first. You'll get your say. When we found them, they didn't have anyone's name on them. Millie... We sold them to get enough money to buy Mr. Limpy some fish for dinner. Huh? Yeah, we couldn't catch any fish, even with marshmallows for bait. But we wanted the pine cones for Mr. Limpy too. He needs them to start his fire tonight, to keep him and Taffy Bogle warm. But he won't have any dinner if we give the pine cones to you. And we need the pine cones or we won't have a nice warm fire tonight either. Poor Mr. Limpy, he's going to miss out. One way or the other. Hmm. There has to be an answer. We just have to think about it. I've got an idea. Millie asked her dad to hook up the box trailer to his car and everyone worked together to collect a whole lot of pine cones. I think there'll be enough pine cones for Taffy Bogle to keep that pine cone now. <laughs> Come on, girls. That sun isn't getting any higher in the sky. Yeah, and we've still got to get that fish from Mr. Limpy. It took the rest of the afternoon to fill the trailer with pine cones. 
All the shops were closing by the time they got back to town. Jack and Tom would have to hurry if Mr Limpy was going to have fish for dinner. Still got that money? Yeah, and some extra pine cones too. Well, hurry up. The fish shop will close any minute now. Come on. Hope they make it. Now let's get these pine cones to Mr Limpy. Not yet, I'm afraid. They should be back by now. Well, perhaps the shop had closed. Never mind. At least Taffy Bogle and I'll be able to have a nice warm fire, thanks to everyone's efforts. It's them! Jack and Tom! <sighs> <laughs> well, that's not the welcome I was expecting. Sorry, Dad. We were hoping it was Jack and Tom with the fish for Mr Limpy's dinner. Oh, dear. We've got so many pine cones, I thought you might like some more. These should see you right through winter. That's very kind of you indeed. Perfect. Not exactly perfect. Perfect would have been fish for Miss Limpy's dinner. We're here! Look. Here's your fish, Mr Limpy. They gave us an extra big one when they heard we were buying it for you. Why, thank you, Jack, Tom. Wait, there's more! Because we got more pine cones than we needed, the fish shop lady gave us something else for the rest of the pine cones. You'll never guess! Marshmallows! Roasted marshmallows. There'd been enough fish for everyone, and Mr Limpy was very grateful, not just for the food and the fire, but also for the friendship Millie and Molly and Jack and Tom had shown him. Here's the first roasted marshmallow. Who wants it? Me! I don't think all four of you can have it at once. Well, why don't we wait till you've roasted five? Then we can all eat them together. That's better than arguing. And in return for all your good deeds, I'll tell you the story about how I got my limp. Oh, I thought we could watch television. Well, you can do that if you like. But I thought you might be interested in a story about a rocket racing car. Yeah! Any princesses in the story? Of course. And wild animals? Most certainly. And yellow? Hmm. I'm sure we can find some yellow in the story somewhere. Hooray! 